Hey, geometry teachers of Alabama. I am Missy Suggs, one of the committee members for geometry with data analysis. And we're gonna talk for just a few minutes about unit 10, lesson two, the data collection and analysis lesson. In this lesson, we are going to start on day one with students collecting their own data using some geometry tools, of course. So each student um, in the student pages and the teacher pages, I've given for you this data collection sheet. Um, students will be measuring using a tape measure, ruler, a little bit of both. Um, age and days could be them calculating it for you or using an app on their iPad. Um, it's pretty easy to find out. And I personally have them go ahead and record it on this sheet in case the other gets deleted by some chance. But I've also provided for you a Google Doc or a Google Form that I use with my students. And you are more than welcome to copy that into your um, Google Drive, use it with your classes, and reuse it as often as you want to. If you have never used Google Forms or Google Docs or Google Sheets, I've provided at the top a quick video on YouTube on how Google Forms and Google Sheets works for this lesson. Once the students have put this in, you will get a Google Sheets um, set for your their data. I normally will take that page and duplicate it so that I can change the titles to category A, category B, C, D, and I kind of scramble those up so they aren't in a specific order for students to use on day two. Um, that way, it's just more fun when we start trying to match the graphs on day two. Once they've input the data to wrap up day one, students are gonna take these variables and sort them into categorical or quantitative. That'll give you time to just kind of review with them, make sure they understand the difference and know um, what they're looking at on day two. At, before they exit the room as like an exit ticket or like a little exit discussion, you may just wanna do a quick summary that the graphs for categorical or bar graphs and circle graphs and the graphs that they're gonna be working with on day, the, um, tomorrow would be histograms, dot plots or box plots. And students can mix and mingle these and it's there's no perfect one. They're all accessible for them. So once they've done that, you're gonna go home after day one and you're gonna just cut slips of paper. Just take the Google Sheets and cut down the column and you're gonna just hand a column to the students so that they can match um, after the graphs are created, they can match those titles that are in red here with the graphs that they're seeing on the board. And if there's any that you think are not appropriate or the graphs aren't real pretty or something like that, you can always eliminate and just let the students know we're not doing this category. Um, it's all at your discretion. Um, we're just here to make sure that they have used large data sets and put together the data into a presentation graph um, for um, analyzing. Students will then, on day two, start with a warm up on matching descriptions to graphs, and I've provided the answers for you just to kind of give them an idea of what they're going to do. So, with their chart paper, and I usually go to a half a sheet just to kind of save some chart paper, um, they're going to create either a histogram or a box plot, or if you want them to do both, go right ahead and have them do both just like on the warm-up sheet. Um, it doesn't hurt the students. The more practice they get, the better they will get at those. And so they're going to use their data, make these graphs, and then at the end of the day, you're going to turn around and have a discussion with the students and have them match those red categories with the graphs that the students have um, displayed around the room. Thank you so much. And if you have any other questions, um, feel free to email one of us teachers. Thank you. Good luck.